Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Hello, everybody. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to a 23-year-old pro who qualified for the Olympia in her first year in the pro league. She attends beauty school, has a full-time career, and is the founder of Clearly Confident. She wants to promote self-love and confidence to men and women. Welcome to the show. Dara Diaz, how are you doing? Hello, hello. You said it right. So, <laughs> <I'm so sorry. laughs> thank you for down. having me. It means a lot. <laughs> yes, of course. I'm so happy to have you. And especially because, like, I had messaged you, like, one of our other guests actually expressed the positive impact that you had made on her life. So, I know. I was like, okay. Let's get her on. <laughs> and I'm really glad that I found you. And um, yeah, you're amazing. And so I'm excited. We have so many awesome things to talk about today. And of course, before I start the episode and get into it, I got to know if you have a ritual or a thought or something you do right before you step on stage. Yeah, there's something I do. Um, not really. I. I have been a dancer my entire life, so I'm kind of used to the stage. I feel like a lot of people that may have, do that, it's because they're trying to get their nerves out. Like me, I'm just constantly practicing my routine, and it's like it almost goes right into like my routine when I step on stage. Like I'm practicing it until the judges can see me um, from the sidelines. So, I mean, I'm just always practicing. That's like really the only thing I do. It's not really like a ritual. It's just like getting me amped up and ready to go. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm the same way. I don't have anything specific, but I'll be practicing like a lot. Um, well, I mean, I do dance. Like if I'm backstage <laughs> with the girls and there's music playing, like I'll dance a hundred percent. Like <laughs> I do this with one That's of the other cool. Patty. Like we've competed three times together and every single time, like we were almost like two apart from each other. We'd just be backstage dancing. And now it's just like a joke for like this <sighs> season, like what we're, what we're going to do when we're dancing backstage. But you know, it's just fun. We want everyone to have like their nerves all chilled and stuff. Cause I know what, what it was like when I used to be nervous about the stage. And to me, it's not like that anymore. So I don't want anyone else to feel uncomfortable. And I also don't want to also emanate like, um, almost like a, an impression that like, I'm quiet and I'm like, I don't want to converse with anyone. Like I love having conversations with everybody that's backstage. Like I want everyone to be my friend. So I just like, you know, be out there. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Totally being yourself, making sure people know they can come and talk to you. I think that's great. And yes. you are a very confident person. And I know that's come from a lot that we're going to talk about, but you yeah. inspired, or I mean, you are inspiring a lot of people through your clearly confident brand. And I'm curious as to what, uh, what made you develop that and what really sparked that for you? Okay. So I, again, like ha had, um, uh, whoa, as I said, <laughs> that I was a dancer my entire life. I competed like since I was maybe four years old, but like in dance classes when I was in, uh, when I was two. So me and choreography was always something that just like came to me. It, it was natural. I was able to find lines on stage when I saw people dance and it was the same exact thing when it came to posing. So I can easily look at someone on stage and be like, Ooh, if only she brought her glute closer to the judges. Ooh, if only that she brought her shoulder a little bit more forward, all these little things that I see that can actually create a better image and, you know, proportion for that competitor and, you know, I obviously love this sport so much. So I'm like, I want to impact on it more than just being a competitor. So I ended up being a posing coach. I started, um, you know, with local girls and my teammates as well that knew that I was confident in giving them a great routine um, and actually a customized one, <laughs> not just like a random one. Um, 
And then the names we're trying to uh, come up with, I didn't know what I wanted to name it because I just know I didn't want my name in there. I just wanted it something that really stuck to me. And then when I started putting out the word confident in there, I'm like, okay, what can go with confident? And then one day everyone knew I say the word literally and clearly a lot. And everyone's like clearly confident. Like that's like, hello. And I'm like, Oh my God, clearly confident. Like it's amazing. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, no, if ends our bots, this is what we're doing. Like I got my, well, I'm in the process right now of getting my name trademarked. So it's like really big. Like I'm so excited for it, but that's a little bit on the posing side. And like, of course I, I want to reach anyone. I do FaceTime, I do Skype, I do in person. You know, there's a seminar going on at Beth Francis Powerhouse Gym this weekend. There's girls traveling and they're like, oh, I need to set up a posing session with you, even if it's just for once. I'm like, by all means, let's set up a time. Because <laughs> like, I want people to like almost get that experience. And I feel like that's where, you know, I, I don't want to say the word sell, but like that's where people like love what I give because it's like almost like an experience of going there. It's like almost getting your hair done. It's like, you can get a great product, but it's like what happened while you were there. And that's what I want to, wanted to give. And then also my company is also makeup as well. So I'm in beauty school now, so I cannot do like coloring and hair for hair. So that will probably change. Like the bottom part of my line will change to like makeup artistry, hair and posing. But uh, or maybe cause, I don't know, but the makeup part, I, my, I'm in a family of all cosmetologists. So it was something that just came hand in hand with me and it goes right back to the dancing roots all over again. I had to do makeup when I was on stage and then I started doing it on myself. I did it on my sisters. I did it on family and now I'm doing it on competitors and then people that are outside of that for like special events, weddings, um, you know, all different things. It's like, crazy how much like my company has grown and I'm like really happy about that. That's awesome. And it's so inspiring to hear that as well, because I think there's a lot of people who have a passion or they see an opportunity, but they're afraid to jump on it and they're not sure if it's going to work out. And even now, like you're seeing success and you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool to see that I've grown so much. So what are you doing to stay focused on building your brand while being on prep? So. Um... For me, prep, I don't, I don't know how, because sometimes my mind changes about it. Prep is a job in a sense where, like, this is what I need to do every single day, but then it's also a lifestyle. So when I start seeing it as a lifestyle, I'm like, well, I do it every day anyways. I'm going to be going to the gym. I'm going to be doing cardio. I'm going to be eating clean meals. So what is it any different? So I do part-time training because I'm going full, full-time for school. and then the hours that I give for makeup and posing, however, if you want to call that part-time, full-time or whatever, it's a full dedication. Mm -hmm. It's just, I, um, I don't know. It's like, I can't, I, it's just as I go and I promote it. And when people see, you know, me posting about how I pose or my past routines or, you know, just pictures, how I look on Instagram, I guess people just get inspired and then they just, have an eye to see me pose and they're like I want to pose like her so it's almost like a mutual thing like I'm just showing myself what I have to give everyone and I guess everyone's just trusting that you know I can give them something great and it's not like so much where I have to go out there and promote every single day this this and that I'm just showing everyone my work and if you love it come on come on mm-hmm. over <laughs> yes that's the best way you can do it like if you can run a business and make money and do what you love by being yourself right if you can get paid yep. to be you that is the best gig in the world and Absolutely. i loved i love that you said that it's a full time dedication i cannot relate to that any like seriously girl like that <laughs> i oh, okay so like i was previously before I got into all of this actually right before I'll like I try not to talk too much about myself but I feel like this is gonna draw a good connection um but when I like started my business I was 18 and I was working a job I was actually working two jobs and then as I started to grow with it it was like I'm also a full-time student so I was a full-time student working two jobs and running my business and then two jobs turned into three jobs and it was literally just because these things were coming to me as opportunities and I was really afraid to go 
like full force into my own business as well. And then as time passed, I was like, okay, like I just, I just want to keep doing what I love. Like I don't ever want to sell my soul, you know, I just want to be doing what I want to do. And then it wasn't until last May when I started this podcast actually, um, that I was like, I'm done. I have to just work for myself. And I still have like the jobs that I do. It's all like uh, on my own schedule. Like I get to choose that. And the full-time dedication makes sense to me. It stands out because I'm still a full-time student and I was working so many jobs, but that didn't mean that I wasn't 110% focused on my business and on like prep. Um, it was a combination of it. You know, like you said, it's a part of you. And when something's a part of you, shoot, like (laughs) there's no getting away. (laughs) So that's exactly it. Good. Yeah. And, I, and yeah, what you, were you going to say? You stopped your business, the, the other jobs to focus this on, on this one. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. So, but a similar situation, I didn't stop training. So I actually work at Lifetime Fitness and I adore every single person that I work with. I couldn't be blessed with better people, but they knew that I love training. I love training people. It's amazing. But when they knew that I had something on my mind about clearly confident, they are so accepting of me being like, I can only give these hours to train my clients. And then other than that, I'm like full force on that. And they have my back like to the end. And that's like, what's amazing. And I know that I'm working with great people because it's a corporate, they can do whatever they want. They can be like, you're, you have to give this amount of hours, blah, 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 blah. But they're, totally understanding if I'm like I have to leave I have a makeup client or I have to leave I have a posing client they're like go 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 like we'll see you when you train your next client like in Mm -hmm. a couple hours so it's just like so awesome that I was almost able to like um because training's still a part of clearly confident as well but like working a job for some under someone else is a lot different than you being your own boss so I'm just so happy that they were able to you know accommodate and allow me to grow more because if I if I didn't it's not like I couldn't focus a lot on clearly confident it's just I had to be there for like nine hours in the day on top of being a student and I'm like I don't really have that much time to give when there's people contacting me that they are traveling from Pennsylvania all the way to Long Island so I'm like (laughs) I have to do that like this is my this is my love this is my passion and this is where I want to go for and I want to grow big so I'm just happy that I'm able to do it. Yeah, that's amazing. And it really is obvious as well that you feel so passionate about it. And I love that there are so many people in your corner supporting you through that because nothing feels better, honestly. Like, yes, like no amount of self-love could ever compare, of course, because self-love is the best. But when (laughs) we have the people around us able to support us too, that goes a long way. Um, So like I was saying, I know you're passionate about this. You're passionate about helping others to feel confident. You're really committed to growing this brand and, um, you really want other people to love themselves more. So did something happen in your life that created an internal transformation that you want others to be able to experience? Yes. So I have been going on this whole, obviously within the name clearly confident, it's obvious that I'm trying to like promote girls to be confident within themselves I'm actually still doing it but there was this one moment um back around September that I kept pushing self-care to everyone out there like I want everyone to feel beautiful and you know just be confident do things that you love and you know once you find self-love and happiness within yourself like everything around you changes so the reason why I am saying that so I'm talking about more now back a long time ago uh, when I was in middle school all the way until my first year of college I was bullied like every single day Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that there may be a couple people that are listening to this a lot of people no one but of course I'm here to like tell my story is that I know what it was like to be rock bottom and when people are telling you that you're not beautiful it's so hard to think otherwise So if someone's telling you like, you're ugly, you need to fix this, blah, 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 blah about yourself. And you're trying to tell yourself you're beautiful. It's hard when you're the only one doing that. 
And Mm -hmm. the only way that that is going to change is within you. And it took me all the way until last year to start feeling like amazing about myself. It, It really took a long time. Like I was like mortified from that. Like I, I like tried seeking help because I was just so down and, and the only things that besides like family and friends, like the only things that brought out like this emotion of therapy was dancing and competing. And I knew that this was going to make me better. It makes me feel amazing. It makes me feel happy. And that's what in the end is going to matter. And it's not trying to be in a selfish way, but this is what's going to help me grow. If I am upset about being bullied every single day, how do I expect to emanate to every single woman out there or and even men to be confident? I can't do that. I couldn't, I couldn't even start a company with a name clearly confident without fixing that for myself. And that's what I want to show to everyone now. Like my mindset has changed. Like if someone wants to talk about me, let them talk about me, but I know myself and what makes me feel happy and all this stuff. So I put this whole like self care movement out on Instagram. Um, that like when I got my lashes done, when people got pedicures, like I told everyone to tag me and like, there were so many people that reached out and they're like, I never thought that just going to get a massage would feel even better than if I just went without you saying it. She's like, I, they're like, I never would have done that if I didn't take time for myself and make myself feel happy. And when you are happy, that's when everything else around you is actually going to grow as well. So like, it's going to help with friendships, relationships, your job and everything. So I, I, as much as it's, hurtful and like really sad to think about what happened to me in the past and like that I don't even want to say the word torture because torture could be like can be have any meaning but to me it was torturous like every single day mm-hmm. of like going to school and I am almost thankful that it happened to me because it almost put me where I am today so I don't like obviously like thinking about the negative but I know there may be people that have been bullied or you know upset or depressed or anything like that, but it does get better once you start with yourself. And that's like the actual answer to it all. It's not, you know, anything else. Absolutely agree. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, self-love is the way, um, my whole brand was built on the idea of self-love for similar reasons to you, except for the toxicity was really coming from myself. And, um, I, I think that, well, something I always say is like, the more love that we have for ourselves, then the more we can radiate out into the world and thus the more we can receive. And um, love is a universal language and like it's universal. Every single soul can understand it and it can be felt and it can be, um, it, it can be given, it can be received. And yeah. It is so powerful. If we know how to give it to ourselves and receive it, mm-hmm. then hate no longer impacts us at the same level as it once did without it. Um, right. it they'll be painful and we're allowed to still have those emotions, of course, you know, go through it. But that self-love that you're sharing is what helps you to overcome those types of criticisms or face them or just go with that mindset of let, let them talk, let them talk. Cause I know who I right. am. So right. what are some of your favorite self-love practices? I actually write down things that I love about myself and I physically say it as well. Um, it could be something very small or it could be three sentences long. I am always just trying to create a positive energy um so that along my day like it will do that as well um but I I feel like a a lot I feel like this happens a lot in this industry because of like body shaming and all that stuff but like if you just look yourself in the mirror it a lot of people can't say they love themselves in every single season whether it's all season or or um, competition season, but like you have to love yourself always. And if you don't, you can change that, but not saying you shouldn't not love yourself. Like if you are not happy, then change that. But I just look at myself every day and I'm just like, you're doing amazing. You know, you look beautiful today. Um, You're gonna, you know, if I say I had a test, I'm like, you're gonna ace this test. And I'm just like always trying to you know, um, not see anything dark anymore because I used to always, always, always be the person of like 
um, negativity. Like I was, since I wasn't happy with myself when I was younger, everyone around, around me was like bad. Like if someone could be happy and I would be miserable that that person was happy mm-hmm. and it's because I was not happy myself and it sucked because it was within me but it was because of other people and all I had to do was step out from that environment and you know create my own you know what I'm saying so Mm -hmm. self-love goes a long way like I make sure that you know every girl loves when they're tan so I'll put self-tanner on I'll get my lash eyelash extensions done I get my hair blown out twice a week um and I know that this comes with an expense um some people like putting on makeup but you know this is just something that I'm able to do and I know that I'm happy doing it and I love myself uh, when I have these things. So this is just something that I'm going to always continue because I almost found the answer. Now, does that mean it's going to change? It could, but as of right now, I know this Mm -hmm. is what like makes me like love myself more. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think that's awesome. There's so many different ways to express it and everyone can receive love differently. Like even if you look at it from an objective relationship, because I know when I was struggling to love myself, I was like, I don't think I ever will. Like, I don't know if it's possible. So like that objective, that objective viewpoint is very helpful. And I'd be like, okay, well, like in a relationship, some people receive like the five love languages, right? Like some people. Oh, yes. I'm you so happy know? you just said this. <laughs> <laughs> we on the same wavelength. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. It's like you, like for you, it's like, okay, I invest in uh, self-care through action, right? Gifts, like you buy yourself these um, treatments, you know, that you really yes. enjoy. And maybe for someone else. And you express love through your writing and your speaking to yourself. And I do the same thing in the morning. I write down at least three self-love states. Statements. And then when I look in the mirror, like negative thoughts come up, but that doesn't, I mean, I'm human. So then I can combat that with positive thoughts. And it's, uh, it's amazing what happens when we can accept our body at all stages and find out what's the best way to receive love from ourselves. Because anybody can give love, but how are you going right. to receive it? Exactly. So you exactly. expressed that even in your improvement season, you're able to do that. And I noticed that like from going through your page, I was like, okay, in one of your posts, you were writing how much you loved your curves. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. I'm going to have to ask her, like, what are some of the things that you do to maintain and raise your confidence through any season? Cause sometimes girls only like when they have lean and their lines are showing everywhere and others actually prefer the curvier look. So how do you embrace both? Right. Right. So, okay. I, this actually is probably like the first time that I'm really in depth thinking about how, how I do it, but mm-hmm. Like when I'm in my off season, I'm Puerto Rican. So I have, I I may not look it, but I am. So I have those curves and I like love to embrace it. Now, obviously this podcast is here for me to be like honest and raw. When I go to the gym and a gym that has nothing to do with bodybuilding. So I mean, like when I go to Lifetime, uh, if I go to, I don't know, some like random gym or corporate gym. I get more compliments when I'm curvy Mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm like, why am I getting so many compliments? Like, shouldn't people be like, wow, she has abs. Wow. She has veins. (laughs) And then when people started telling me that I, that they love my curves, like I started looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you know what? So do I, like, I love my curves. Like even my boyfriend, he's like, I love you in every stage. He's like, I love you because I have something to grab and goes, but I like you the other way too, because you're nice and petite. He's like, so there's there's both answers. And I'm like, exactly. Like I'm not one at all to be only five pounds above stage weight in their, in their improvement season at all. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be sloppy, Mm -hmm. but I let my natural curves come through because you know, I'm a woman, you know, that is natural for me. I I don't want my body to be an extreme at all, at all moments. And I appreciate when the curves come back. Like, yeah, my, my waist may be tiny and it's, but it's not lean, but I'm okay with that. And I just feel like, you know, you may fill out your outfits a little bit better. And I think that's where women have to start embracing curves, not looking at it as fat. That's like the complete opposite. Like I, I say that I have fat 
but that doesn't mean I am fat, you know, like mm-hmm. the fat is in the nice areas. Like, so, and I want to shape it. Like I, there, if I want to look at myself in the mirror and then tell myself, you know what, I don't really look good today. Then this is where I come back with a positive note and be like, okay, if I don't think I look good today, what am I going to do about it? Am mm-hmm. I going to go on the Stairmaster? Am I going to pull back on the calories and, or, you know, or am I going to just, you know, have a really heavy workout and get like pump up my glutes even more. Like I just give like myself a solution to, instead of like, I, I acknowledge the negativity and make it something positive and it, everything that I'm saying really all ties together. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to competitions, I get all the compliments from the competitors. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. this is <laughs> where the comes in. so like, I mean, when I see, um, I don't even know what, I don't, I don't want to be mean, but like an outsider, like someone that's not in this sport, like they're like, holy shoot, like you're shredded. And I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, thank you so much. Cause they almost see it as like, um, aesthetic and that you did something that a lot of people can't do. And that's yeah. why I appreciate that because I'm showing my hard work and this is just how my body has come down to after all my hard work so that's what makes me appreciate that as well like obviously my plaything just amp, amp me up and like light a fire fire under my ass but I guess that's how I find happiness in both bodies because there's really no reason for me to be upset about it like listen if I was in my off-season normal weight and then 20 pounds above that then you know then that's a, a problem in my sense because that's that would be like overweight but maybe there's something uh, solution. I mean, like something underlying that w- of why I'm like that. And then that's when I would fix it. But in a true off season, like body, I love my curves. Like even last year going into my pro debut, I was upset in, not like upset, upset, but like, you know, I was like, Oh my God, like I'm going to lose my butt. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> and, then I was like, I'm, and then I'm like, you know what? But that's just going to make me work harder. I do not want a pancake ass on stage. I said, so I'm going to work really, really hard to have <laughs> even when I'm lean. And this is what I just did. Like, it was just something that I just loved myself. And again, this wouldn't have happened if this was years ago. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this to you before, but uh, I don't like saying this out, out loud in a sense because I know people that that has had it so much worse. Mm-hmm. But I actually used to daily and multiple times a day abuse laxatives when I was younger. Mm. And that actually falls under the category of being bulimic. Right. And I don't like going out there and being like, oh, well, I was bulimic, but then like I was completely fine in a sense of eating. Like I would, I wouldn't binge, but like I would go eat what I want. And then like later on, I would have three like laxatives, be in excruciating pain. And then after I was all done with everything, then I'd be like, oh, I'm skinny again. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't in a sense that I got so skinny how bad other people have, but it was my way of like wanting my body to look amazing and I know actually a good amount of people that have started prep coming from an eating disorder oh so yeah. Oh, yeah I give them like a lot of props and I mean again like mine was nowhere in a sense a bad case compared to a lot of other people but I know what it was like to mentally go through it when it was like almost like addictive to like go I remember this exactly it was in from high school away into college this is where I started getting into that transition where I was like done getting bullied and I wanted to look good and that's what I turned to I was like oh laxatives are going to make my stomach flat so I'm going to take laxatives when you can look back at pictures of me for my entire life I was always like a stick figure like mm-hmm. that was just me but I just wanted something that was just a little bit better than I had because people were telling me otherwise and then again like I this is nothing how I think now now I love myself. If I, I was 30 pounds lighter when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just, it's so different because if I saw that weight now, even though weight to me is not like the scary, like number doesn't ever scares me. But if I looked at myself now and, and this was me seven years ago, I'd be freaking out. Right. And now it's not like that. <laughs> so it's just like, I love myself at whether I step on, on the scale at my stage weight or I step on my scale on, on, on improvement season. I just make, I just make sure that I love myself and I'm always doing things to like feel better. So. Wow. I love that. And it's true. Like there's, there's so much that uh, you brought up that is just really, really good. Like so many golden nuggets in that. And I think that 
in the improvement season and something you said that I really liked was that it's not about calling yourself or seeing it as fat, but it's about embracing the curves as a woman. And then I also liked how you said that, um, when you go to the gyms that are less bodybuilding focused, you get a lot more compliments um, in the improvement season. And say, that's seriously what I've been noticing this whole entire like improvement season for myself. I've gained a lot of weight and I look a lot fuller and I know that and there were health reasons as well, but I'm very happy with my body and I love my curves and my shape. And everyone is literally coming up to me. Like people who never said anything on prep are like, you look so healthy. Yes, so exactly. And I'm yes. like, health. Yeah, help, <laughs> help. That's a good word because uh, that's what I'm going for, and it's amazing. Like then, obviously, when you're prep, like it's almost like you're a spectacle because it's extreme. It's very different, and the people like that you see at gyms, like they see you go from one extreme to the next, even if it's not that massive of a change, right? Like even if you don't gain, let's say, like forty pounds or thirty pounds, or uh, even if we're just talking not even about weight but fat percentage, like right. even then, like they'll still see you change, um, just like we see ourselves change. And um, and then when you mentioned about how when you were younger, you would. Um, essentially purge through the use of laxatives. Um, Now there's competitors who purge through the use of cardio. And unfortunately, like the, the reality is that there are lots of women who have used bodybuilding to overcome eating disorders. And there are lots of women who are in bodybuilding and have eating disorders. And Um, the more we can promote self-love, the more we can promote body acceptance, like you are, I think the better. And then the last thing I want to touch on that you brought up that I thought was really powerful. And it reminded me of how a lot of times people think that to love yourself means to never want to change yourself. And that's not necessarily true at all. You said that you look in the mirror and if you're unhappy, you ask yourself honestly what needs to change and then you take the action. And I think that's true self-love, being honest, being open about it, and then committing to making yourself feel better. Self-love is not about sabotaging yourself so much because "Eh, eh, I'm fine the way I am. When, yeah, you're fine the way you are, but you're allowed to want to be better. Right. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that you said that. And um, into the, I guess, kind of going with improvement season, you said like you don't, you don't get sloppy, you know, but have you ever felt like you have fallen off track? And if you have ever felt that way, what do you do to feel better about it? Uh, Okay. So I went to Nationals 2016 um the one that's held in Miami Mm -hmm. and unfortunately but fortunately at the same time I missed my pro card by two placings so I got fourth place there and three days later was Thanksgiving and so Mm -hmm. I went through a hard time during that prep nothing prep related just life um so it was just like a hard prep it wasn't anything easy sunshine rainbows and once I saw food, I was like, oh, yeah, like, let me eat it. And I'm, like, the biggest family-oriented person. Like, I will never, ever want to miss a day, like, with my family. And the day that everyone gets together are holidays. So I just didn't want to exclude myself. But it doesn't mean that, like, I couldn't or could make three plates of food if I wanted to. It's just I was just normal. And then once I started getting this food again, I was just almost like, oh my God, food, food making me happy and all this stuff. And what got me out of that was actually starting prep in January because I had to almost force myself to be like, all right, Dara, like done with the bad eating and let's go. And then that's what was my prep into universe where I got my pro card. So where I had my first actual amazing improvement season was after my pro card. Um, And where I really focused that food, good good food quality food is what makes you grow not just having leftovers from thanksgiving for the past (laughs) week and then christmas leftovers (laughs) like you know what i'm saying so yeah um i have i have and i'm i don't want to speak for every competitor but 
I know that some people don't want to come out there in a minute, but I know that everyone, I, almost everyone has experienced the time, even in during prep where you just like full low and you're like, are, are, like, am I really doing this? Like, is it worth it? Blah, 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 blah. Like I could be going and eating with my friends and family and all this stuff. And uh, I would say like that, that one going after um, nationals was the hardest. And yeah, I would say even after like this past, October was probably the hardest for me too, only because of, um, unfortunately, like not going to, not going to um, be on the stage at the Olympia and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And October, it was like, almost like that was almost the true fight of being like, you're better than this. Everything happened for a reason. Like at first I was like, so upset and then I kept telling myself again everything happens for a reason Dara like everything's gonna be okay you're gonna get back on you're gonna go actually physically be on that stage next year so like that it was like completely fresh and everyone was back and some people who didn't watch the show and saw me come back from and everyone from the gym was asking me questions so it was overwhelming and I appreciate everyone being there for me and stuff like that but that I would say that was the only time too and then once I started this, that's actually what started more of the self-care stuff. And then when I started doing that, that's where I felt like amazing with myself. I was like, it's okay that I didn't step on that stage. Like every, my life is okay. Like things are so much worse than me just being like, Oh, I, you know, I competed, you know, I, mm-hmm. there's, I, I can't complain about that stuff when there's worse things that people are like going through in their life. And I was like, this is what makes me happy. And I'm going to conti- going to continue it. And that's when I started getting my lashes put back on and you know using self tanner so I'm not completely pale and like I just started feeling amazing and then you know everything else went with it so it was a long prep it was 10 months and I've never done that long of a prep before so once I got to like see friends and stuff like that like everything just almost fell into place and I know that's extremely hard for a lot of people um because you kind of get like the people that have experienced it you get lost and you're just like I don't know what to do um there's I've I've heard heard so many stories and I feel like the best way to give people advice is the ones that have gone through the experience so Mm -hmm. um if anyone's listening to this and is going going through it you can contact me I would love to talk to you (laughs) I just don't want anyone to feel like they're alone or like they feel like you know I'm the only one that has gone through this because I'm sure everyone almost everyone has gone through a, you know, a moment where they like fall short and they're like, how am I picking myself back up to be where I was? Yeah, so. absolutely. And I think sometimes that is, that becomes really prominent in people's lives when they maybe expected a different outcome than they received. Like when I look back at when it was the hardest for me after a show, it was usually when I maybe didn't place as high as I would have liked to or right. if I didn't think that I was going to be able to compete again in a long time, that was when I struggled the most. And I, I know the very first show I ever did was a really horrible, horrible post-show rebound. I was like, totally, I hated everything. That's for another day. But then like, right. then like this past show is like, I looked the best I've ever looked. I was super happy, but wasn't going to compete again for a while because I needed to get my health back. And that was tough because I was balancing, okay, well, I have to get out of this identity of competitor and into this identity of someone who loves competing but needs to be healthy right now. And that was, that was finding that balance was tough. And I definitely agree with you that people who have gone through it can provide a lot of great insight and advice. It inspired me to launch my post-show program and really help people with that self-love and that mindset aspect because so many people struggle with it. It's like, it's really heartbreaking, but at the same time, it's helped to develop us into, I think, better people and better competitors. And um, I mean, looking at competing as a whole, it's an amazing sport. And I know you love it and you are invested in it and it makes you really happy. So what about competing brings you personally so much joy? Uh, okay. A couple of things. Um, the re- reward of my hard work. Um, I always love that feeling. And actually, again, like when I danced my entire life, that was like my escape and like my therapy and that's the way that I was so 
Do you know anything about dancing? Have you danced before? I'm the worst dancer you ever <laughs> met. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's there's like different like categories. Um, like there's hip hop, ballet, lyrical, jazz, contemporary, and my favorite ones were jazz, contemporary, and lyrical. So those ones you like really almost have to put on like an act like if there was a song that i was dancing to and it was talking about like a sad moment like you had to express like a sad like a sad person and just live that moment mm-hmm. and perform and it was just so cool to transition that. and then that's what i love about competing is that I, i'm coming on stage and i think this is where a lot of people um you know, it's like to them, it's just posing. Like to me, this is a performance. Like this is the, all the work that I have put on, put in towards myself and into this sport. And I'm here now to show everyone what I have. So it's not just the posing routine. Like I want people to be like, that was a performance. And that's what I was able to see from the, like the crowd standpoint when someone just poses or someone just dances and is a completely different version of when someone actually puts on a performance. And that's what Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, um, they, I catch their eyes when I'm on stage. So that's like the feeling of it too, that like knowing that, you know, I go on stage and then, you know, the way that I look, the way that I perform has gotten me great placing. So, um, it's also knowing like, you know, how well I've done and how I will continue to always push to be even better than that. So yeah. that's like, what's the exciting part. And, you know, everyone loves like show day. I mean, besides the fact of you being like extremely tired, like everyone loves getting glammed up, you know, looking beautiful and getting all those stage shots and having your sparkly bikini on, like it's amazing. So it's just it's like, I keep saying it throughout this entire podcast, but it's like, it brings back dance days and I mm. loved, you know, dance. dance was my love and my passion. And now this is, so it's like the same exact thing, but different motion. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think that's awesome that you're able to relate the two so much. And that's actually helped you be so successful in this. And I'm wondering like when you step on stage, yeah. how do you get yourself into like performance mode like what changes is there a switch that you flip on like do you become a different person up there are you just um sharing more of who you are are you matching the music like are you connecting with the audience like I'm curious as to how that feels and looks like what changes so I connect with people very well um and I actually show my emotions all on me so even if I'm sad, you'll see if I'm sad. If I'm mad, you'll see if I'm mad. I obviously am not going to show that on stage, nor should I be mad or sad on show day anyways. But <laughs> uh, um, but I'm just so ecstatic to be like hearing my name. Like when, again, like everyone knew my name in high school and middle school for bad reasons in a sense, because I was bullied all the time, you know? So to hear my name in such a positive way is like incredible. Like, I mean, it's not famous, but it's almost like people know me. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. different when people knew me for the wrong reasons than like people are knowing me and seeing me for the right reasons now. So it's almost like exciting. And it's just like, I, it just touches like a different place to be like, and Dara Diaz number or competitor, blah, blah, blah. And you're walking on stage and you're like, wow, like it's, this is me. Like it's my time. And, you know, I connect with everyone and I will connect with people in the crowd. When I hear my family and my boyfriend, especially my boyfriend, like my heart's like pounding right now. means the world to me. But like when I hear them, like say my name and I'm like, holy, oh my God, this is really happening. Like I'm doing this. When I see the judges, I'm like, you're keeping your eyes on me. Like, I don't want any, I don't want your eyes on anyone else, even though that sounds selfish, but that's the the way that you have to think when you go on there. Like you are going to be looking at me this whole time. Like I'm going to make sure you don't look at anyone else because I'm giving you something so good. And that's what it is. Like I connect with every single one of the judges. It's not just the head judge. Um, Especially when the music comes on. I love when the music comes on. That's like almost the dancing part. Like I (laughs) strut out there and, you know, I go to each step, even if I don't know the song, I can actually hear music very well in a sense where I know like what beats coming next. So like, I'll go to that rhythm. It's just, it's so and that as well is what also makes the performance even better. Like, again, like I 
I critique people in a sense because I see it at, from a coach standpoint. So when I watch someone pose on stage, like I could tell if they're off key and like, does it really matter that you're off key? No, but being on key to the music just looks like you're actually putting on a performance, not just a posing routine. And this is where it all goes back to like why I feel um, that performing is like the, the natural and easy and fun part for me. And that's why I want to, you know, share that with everyone else as, as well. Cause I know posing isn't, you know, people's strong suits. And um, so that's why I'm like, I want to be there to help everyone else. And I know exactly what it feels like once I nail it. And it's just like, I'm on top of the world. I don't care what placing I get. Like I just, you know, I brought my best. So totally. it all it brings everything together. That's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And when you were competing as an amateur, were there some things that you learned that have helped you to compete as a pro and do so well? Yeah, uh, yes. Well, obviously comparing myself um, in my muscle um, density and quality and shape and size, everything about the muscle is where I saw it. Like when I first was going into my pro Oh, no, into universe where I got my pro card. I actually saw Angelica Tashera and I saw her and I was like, Hey, Angelica, can you like, can you look at me and just watch my posing? I just want to make sure from her view, from a pro's view that I'm doing it right. Like I nailed the posing routine and all that. And I remember posing for her and she's like, you're like practically already a pro. Wow. She's just like, you look amazing. And, and I knew, and this is where a lot of people appreciated me when I talked to everyone, when I got off stage from universe and like, I was ecstatic, I was in pro. And then all of a sudden I looked at it, I went back and I critiqued myself and I'm like, well, you know what? I can't step on a pro stage. I have to wait because I need to grow my glutes and I need to grow my hamstrings. My quads can come up a little bit more. My shoulders can be exactly where they are. All mm -hmm. these, and I'm like, next time I'm going to curl my hair, all these things that I knew what could make me even better. And that's where I, took improvement season extremely extremely like important like that was so much to me where I was like if I want to be the next best thing I need to do what others are not and it's not just going to be my everyday workouts and all that stuff like I need to grow my muscles like crazy and I'm not just going to step on a pro stage just to show everyone I got my pro card I want to come back and everyone being like wow and the fact and that's what was amazing when I went on stage I was standing next to Olympians Yes. And, and I didn't, like, and it's my first time. And that's where I knew that I, I did it. Like I was like everything that I thought and worked hard for is now here. Mm. And in your, in your improvement season from when you earned your pro card, what did you do to put on more muscle to, until you felt ready to step on that stage? Like what were some of the things that you did in order to make that happen? I started lifting heavier and lifting heavier. And this is the first season that, well, that season was the first season that I incorporated an actual true off season diet with my coach. Again, like last off season, like that was the one that I was talking about that I would just ate whatever I wanted. I saw the difference when I started giving my body the food that it needed. So the right food, huge, 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 huge. No one, everyone underestimates how important an off season diet is. And I hate using the word off season, but it's just so much easier to say than improvement season, yeah, but it I'm really is an improvement season. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that was it. And then just like heavy lifting. Like I remember I was like curling, um, doing hamstring curls and I was curling like 115 for like over 20 and everyone's like, where the heck did that come from? And I'm like, the strength is amazing. Like I'm just I'm motivated. I'm determined. Like I want to grow. Like even if I was squatting and only got a, like a plate and a quarter, like I was I was setting up to make sure that I hit a two plate. Like these were things that I made goals and I was just like, I want to grow my muscle. And I almost tested myself to see what worked best. Like I didn't want it to be just go to the gym and, you know, do a little work, like leg workout and then be sore. I wanted to get to the point where I was almost matching my boyfriend, not, not like weight, but I wanted to be able to like, almost if I had to work out with him, like obviously strip the weight if needed, but like, keep up with what he had like I that was just like my biggest thing I'm like I need to be I need more mature muscles and I know I'm going to get that with heavy lifting and obviously with time too but right he, at that point we were fighting time because I am 23 and you know the women with mature muscle are a lot older so mm -hmm. 
um, I was like, I'm just, I just got to do what I can. And I just went into the gym excited every single day. And I was just like, you know what, today I'm going to like every workout, I figured out an exercise to be in a squat rack. Not meaning like squatting, but like deadlifting, you know, mm-hmm. shoulder presses and uh, rack pulls, all that stuff. I was like, I'm, I'm growing. And that's what I kept telling myself. Like it was one of those affirmations every single day. Like, I'm like, I'm growing. I'm doing this. I'm going to be the next best thing. And that's what I kept telling myself. And even though I don't see that now, because obviously I, didn't, I don't have a plaything from the Olympia, but it's just like, I kept telling myself that. And I, and that's what everyone needs to tell themselves, even when they go on stage that I'm going to be number one, even if you're number two, you're number one. That's the, that's the mentality you want to go to with anything, you know, that, or you'll never make it to number, number one, just telling yourself that you're, you know, you want to place top two. Don't say you want to place top two because, because getting first place is top two. Just say you're going to get first. You know, so that's exactly. what I kept telling myself. And that was the same daily talks every single day. I would map out my entire day, what I had to do, what I was eating. And it didn't even consume me. And that's what, that's the funny part. Like it was, it was so much fun. And I that's love what it. I noticed that I needed that. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome info as well. Cause I was just literally talking to my boyfriend last night about muscle building and growth. And we were both talking about how important it is to try to increase weight every single time you go into the gym, um, based on your last, your last session and, um, challenging yourself, even if you don't feel the muscle contracting entirely, which of course always feels good, push yourself for a few sets before and challenge your limits because you might surprise yourself and, um, lifting heavy is one way to grow. There's obviously a lot of different ways to grow, but for the sake of time, it it can be really beneficial and being smart with your training and being willing to push yourself, you know, like making sure exertion rates are high. They're not just like you're going through the motions um, because right. like you said, it's improvement season. You're not slacking. You're not getting sloppy. You're being intentional. And um, It's also cool that you mentioned the affirmations. I think that is a huge deal. Why say you're going to be top two when you can be number one? And um, the the only show I've placed first place in that whole entire prep, I repeated to myself, like I could hear her voice announcing my name first place and then it happened. And then um, I know like heading into the show after that, after doing like a double peak week, I was like, I'm nationally qualified. I'm nationally qualified. Um, but then I was also like, I was like, why don't I just, after that, I was like, why didn't I just affirm that I was first place again? Like I, instead I was focusing so much on one thing that I, I think I like got distracted by that. I just wanted an outcome versus like a, like a specific thing. You know, I wasn't allowing myself to be specific. I was holding myself back because of it. I still got the right. result, but you're right. Like to to say you're number one, even if you didn't make it to number one, you now know what you need to do to get there. And exactly. so, so you're obviously like now you're looking to get to the O and um, re-qualify. What yeah. is your game plan for that? Honestly, do you like... Uh, well, I want to execute almost the same thing that I did last year. And I, I mean, improvement season wise, yes, I am already, but, um, just going to the show just with a positive mind and, you know, the work I, you know, I don't want to go one day like without thinking that I could have done better. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It's just, I'm just going to go to the shows and then just keep obviously competing until that that Olympia list comes out and yeah. I'll just make sure that like, you know, I just do what it takes. Like, I mean, not to like to my own horn, but like I did it last year. So like, I'd let me do it again. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. that's where I'm at. Like I, I know what it's like to have gotten there. Obviously this year is going to be a lot more hard than it was last year because this year they're taking less people. Um, because I don't know if you knew they changed it for 2018, but 2017, there were still pro shows that were happening that people went first and then that they got to the Olympia. Mm -hmm. So now since they changed that in 2018 has already come, there's no additional shows. It's just the top 25 in in, uh, top 20 in ranking plus the top five from the previous Olympia. So So there's not like shows that you can win and get a qualification. No. Wow. Interesting. 
Yeah, so the only ones that you can do is place top five at the Olympia the year before or um, obviously um, rank up points and then you have to be the top 20. So, like, for an example, I, I don't remember if she ended at this, but Laura Lee, um, second runner-up, mm-hmm. she – actually I don't remember if she ended with 40 but when I last saw she had 40 points this year there's another competitor uh, I believe it was Chris she has 28 and we didn't even start the season yet right so now the numbers are even higher way you harder to, yeah you're gonna have to do a lot right. of shows exactly so I did three shows and I think I had Oh, somewhere between 19 and 24 points. Wow. But the thing is, is the lowest number on that top 20 list, 28, is the, lo- the lowest number on that list, 14. We won't know until it gets all the way until that list is coming out in August. And that's going to create even more competition because every girl, because there's question involved with that, every girl's going to continue. A few girls I've talked to, it's like, I'm going to step on stage until my name's on that list. And with many, many girls having that as their mindset, I can imagine that that's going to be an interesting list. It'll be interesting to see how those numbers actually end up being. And um, yeah, like Laura Lee, she did like four shows leading into it and she placed like first every single show that she did leading up to it and she's actually gonna be the next guest so I'll probably talk to her about it but it's interesting how I love her yeah (laughs) she seems so amazing I'm excited we we call each other sister she's like my sister (laughs) I could see that you're you're such a sweetheart and so is she and like yeah I'm excited you you're really amazing and I I'm gonna totally interrupt the show to just say like it's it's been a real pleasure so far. Like you're awesome. Oh, thank you as well. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> of course. But okay. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, what I'm trying to say is just like, it's going to be interesting. It's cool that you're doing so many shows and I'm cheering for you. I think that's going to be, um, it's just going to be cool to see. And there's so many pros out there, but I think there's girls who are ready for it and there's girls who are committed to it. And then there's girls who they're, they know that it's not their time yet, maybe. Um, right, so right. it'll be cool to see who who's committing to that journey. And um, I'm curious now, like this doesn't necessarily just have to be in regard to competing, but on a right. daily basis, is there anything that you do specifically to continuously align yourself to your goals? Um, It, it this seems like cliche but like literally just putting in the effort and work into the goal that I want that's like it like I I would have never sat down one day and dedicated time like strictly for me being on the computer finding and marketing blah blah, blah all this stuff for clearly competent for an example um but I did it. Even I remember when I was going to colleges, I had to sit down, put a time that I was going to dedicate what school I wanted to go to, which was the obviously, obviously the goal and apply to the school. So it's like the same thing. Like I had to make time. Like it, I used to be so independent. I mean, dependent on people and I was never independent. So now that mm-hmm. I am depend, uh, not dependent on anyone and I have like me time, it's like now I get to focus on what I need to do. Like I'll make a list. Um, every day, like marking off what I need to do and what has got done. And I'll even do a cross off differently. So if I completed something, it's a different cross than if it was something that I didn't do. And then at the end of the week, I'll look back and be like, why didn't I do any of those things that I, that I said that I was going to do on that list. Mm. So I would figure out like what it is. Like if it was something like I needed to uh, go to Sephora, like why did I cross that off? Did I not have enough time? Was it not the right day? And I, and I thought that it would be the right day. So you know, something as small as going to Sephora, yeah, that's makeup for me to get for my clients. You get what I'm saying? So all these things, yeah. like I just write it down and I make sure that I do it because I know that if I don't, I'm not a lazy person, but I'm a homebody. I like to just be home mm-hmm. cuddly with a blanket around me and watching TV until I have to do something or vice versa and the day with that. <laughs> I don't yeah. like really just going, I was never a going out person at all. Um, I love to hang out with people, but like I, I just like being all snuggled up and <laughs> like, I feel like that's what it was. Like when I actually dedicate the time to put work in, 
that's how I was able to succeed like my goals so like I remember where I used to work a nine to four job at 4 30 I was at the gym and then I trained until whatever time seven let's just say and I told myself I could not take any other clients until after seven because I'm going to dedicate this time to me mm-hmm. and that's what I did and once I started seeing that like there was actual time for me it, it didn't matter what it was if it could have been something so small to get my nails done or whatever it was now I'm getting to my goals and and you know one of my goals w- was self-love and self-improvement and it still is I'm still working on myself. I'm not perfect. No one is, but I'm just saying it's just something that I'm always working towards and writing down and making sure I physically see what needs to be done. Yes. I love that. I, I think it's so good for accountability, like self accountability. When you write something down, it's like a commitment to yourself. It would be like creating a plan, like for the gym and not doing that exercise or not doing that movement or the last set or going up and wait just because I'd rather be doing something else. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of things you'd rather do. I'm just like you, like I would much rather be at home all day, curled up under a blanket, like hell yes, sign me up for that. Like I (laughs) barely am dressed in anything but PJs, you know, but I get my shit done. I get it done because I write it down and I make it happen because I am a priority. Therefore, my goals are a priority and it's, it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. And I'm glad that you shared that with us because that is applicable to every area of life. And, um, being someone who is more of a homebody, you're a good example that even in that position, even in that type of personality, you can, shift and transform your life. You can still go after things. You can still make yourself a priority um, in different ways. And I think that's really commendable. So um, I want to wrap up the show by asking you now um, if there's advice that you have for someone who is thinking about competing but hasn't competed yet. And then advice for someone who has been competing and is looking to get their pro card. Okay. The first one is starting to compete. Yeah, someone who's never competed okay. before but is thinking about it. Okay, so my advice is to do research on, you know, coaches, uh, anything like shows that you want to do, like look back and I, I feel like the word that just keeps coming out to mind is research. If you are someone that do, does macros, don't do a, go to a coach that doesn't do macros. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. need to figure out what's going to be best for you. Another thing that I don't know if a lot of people say, and guess what? I'll be the first one to do it. Be financially ready. It's going to be something that's going to suck money out from you, even though the reward, it doesn't matter what the price is that's coming out. Just know that you need to have the money for the, the registration and you know the coaches and for your posing suits and your actual suit your jewelry all this stuff is going to add up so just be financially ready um listen to people go to ones about posing coaches obviously again if you're listening to this you can (laughs) buy all (laughs) contact me but you know find out someone that's right with you connect with the person um and you know just Put your all into it. This is something that you're doing for you. This is not for anyone else. If it's not the right time, you know, ground yourself and acknowledge it and then figure out a time that it will. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Um, but just don't go into this anything less than 100% because there's going to be girls that are doing that and it's going to show. So just go into this with like your full heart and, you know, just be happy, like get, get excited that you're doing something for yourself and, you know, that you get to be on stage in front of people and, you know, show off all that hard work because you can show up hard work in so many different ways, but this one is actual physical. So it just have fun with the process and just, and trust the process. That's a big thing too. Um, so that's my advice for people just starting. Um, and then people that want to get their pro cards, you know, figure out the reason why you didn't get that pro card from that first nationals that you went to. Contact, contact judges. Go to a posing coach. Talk to your coach. Figure out what it is because obviously there's a reason. And I don't like trying to be like, I don't want that to come off mean, but is it because that person got bigger glutes? Now you know to go work on your glutes. Mm-hmm. Now, if it, was it your conditioning? what happened? Was it 
um, you know, that you had a bad week that you were stressing or that you ate the wrong thing or whatever it was, figure it out. Like there's going to be your time and it's like, you know, and it's going to come and fall at the right moment. And I feel like a lot of people get discouraged when they feel like it is and then they, and it's not. And just like, keep going, put your face out there constantly constantly there's people that come back into you know the pro league or whatever the amateur league two years later and you're like where'd you go there's new faces now mm. they don't want it. they want to see that new face constantly over and over and over again who's this girl oh what did she change oh my god like she actually listens to listen to our feedback this is what they want to see so don't stop don't you know don't get discouraged because I know this is where a lot of people fall off when they don't get it let it fight let it light fire underneath your ass there's always going to be someone better than you in any aspect of your life and there's going to be people below but be the best version of you to make that win that's it mm. that's the like literally the best thing that I can say because I was so ecstatic and when I got my when I got fourth place and I said what was it that they had that I didn't that I didn't get my pro card and that's exactly what I did I fought for it. I grew my, grew my glutes. I came in with a better conditioning. You know, I changed up one part of my routine and there we go. Nailed it. Got my pro card. These are all things that you everyone needs to acknowledge that there is things that need to be changed. So, and you know what? One quote that I live by, I don't have any tattoos yet or at all, but if I could have one that I would live by every single day that everything happens for a reason, there's a reason why you didn't get it then. And there's going to be a reason when you get it another time. So just, you know, don't, don't be upset or hard on yourself that you didn't get it that one time, or even if this is your first time going into a national. Um, and that's it. Just, you know, kind of just look at other people that are getting it and just compare yourself. And I don't mean compare yourself in a bad way. I just mean like, you know, are your glutes not having like tie-ins? Are your shoulders extremely small compared to your legs? Like that, that's what I mean by compare. I don't mean being like, oh look at her like not like a bad way but just like what what is making them win what are they looking for that's what I mean by compare yourself like I I remember I I, I emailed the judges I spoke with them if I could mm -hmm. I went up to them right after the show hey I know I got fourth place but what can I do next time I did that after every pro show hey I know I know I got second place and I'm still ecstatic about it but what can I do to make first that's what I was always doing. I was always going up to them and asking them because I wanted to know that answer because I want that to be the answer. I want that first place. And I know that that's what all the girls want or you wouldn't be on a national stage. Everyone's mm -hmm. a pro card, you know what I'm saying? So figure it out what it's going to take for you to get there and just, you know, be happy that you are able to do what you are able to do. And that's it. I That's love how that. I want that. <laughs> That's amazing advice. I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I was taking so many notes. Seriously, that, <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate You're welcome. it. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, that was that was really cool. And um, this whole episode has been really awesome. Like I was saying, you're really just a great person. And I've really enjoyed this. And um, you've opened up a lot, which I appreciate that you're vulnerable and real with us. And I know other people have always appreciated that in episodes, and they're really going to appreciate that in you. So I want them to be able to express that to you. So can you let them know where they can find you, follow you, work with you? Um, just give us the lowdown on that. Yes. So you can, there, I have two Instagrams. My personal Instagram is at Dara Nicole, it's D-A-R-A-H-N-Y-C-O-L-E, which is my first and middle name. If you type in Dara Diaz, you would still find it. And then actually in my bio is my Clearly Confident page. So you can see my posing and my, um, and my makeup as well. Um, obviously if you contact me through my actual in personal Instagram, I'm not going to be like contact really confident because it's still me <laughs> answering it. So you can find me on either one. I answer them both just as fast. I actually have a app number that is in my clearly confident page that you can text and it will come right to my phone. So even if you may not believe that DMs are easy or emails are fast or whatever the scenario is, there's multiple ways to find me. I do actually have a website that you can continue on there as well, clearlyconfident.info. Um, you can contact, so that's going to bring me an email. So again, it's however you, anyone feels comfortable in contacting me. Um, I am 
very, um, what's the word, attentive. So you will, I'll answer you like immediately or obviously as best as I can, depending on what I'm doing. But I obviously want everyone to have a great experience and all that. So I would love to be a part of everyone's journey. I love it. So no excuses. Mm -hmm. Reach out to her. Absolutely. Let her know how much you appreciate it. If you have questions in terms of working with her through Clearly Confident, definitely ask her questions, do the research. Like she said, um, yes. she can obviously help you. So I think that that pretty much sums it up. So everybody listening, I'm going to put all of her links in the episode notes on the show notes page. So that's on www.celestial.fit slash podcast. If you're listening to this months down the road after it's been released, no worries. Just click on the category section on that page, find her name and all that information is going to be there along with notes from the show. So with all that being said, thank you so much again for coming on. And I really appreciate you taking the time and to everybody listening. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day, night or morning, wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this. (laughs) Just make it awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. And thank you for everyone for listening. I really hope that I impacted everyone. And again, you can always contact me in any case, whether it's just to talk or, you know, for competitions as well. So thank you everyone. And thank you, Celeste. I really appreciate that, you know, that you took the time out of your day to talk to me. (laughs) Of course.